So Blender's at it again, adding new effects to glass and caustics. Look at this, this is some new snazzy new stuff. So what is this? Uh, this is called Shadow Caustics. It was introduced in the new Blender 3.2 update. I don't see many videos on it yet. Um, I don't know if it's a popular topic, but I was confused about it, so I decided to make a video on it. So, uh, what shadow caustics actually are is if you look at our um, like caustics, uh, the shadow of the glass, you can see on these edges that I have on this glass model, it's more shadowy um, and it just refracts. It shows that those things are there on the model. Um, when normally, um, if I were to go example, turn this off, um, it wouldn't. Um, it's just flat, kind of how glass normally looks. So um, how we set this up is we can just go open a new project real quick. Uh, we can go ahead and delete our default cube by hitting delete or X on our keyboard. Uh, we can hit shift A. Um, we're just going to add a cylinder real quick. Uh, bring the cylinder up on your um, Z axis by hitting G and Z. Um, you can just slide it. Um, just kind of bring that up to your origin point. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to hit S and C and just kind of scale this up to where it's kind of long like this. Um, now what we're going to do is we are going to hit tab. Uh, we're going to go into uh, face select mode by hitting this little square up here on the top left. Select our top face and just hit I and then just bring it in a tab bit like that. Uh, you can hit E and then Z um, or if it's already locked you can just hit E and then just kind of extrude that down until you see it start to clip through. Bring it just above to where it clips through. And you should have something like this. Uh, we can go ahead and bring this back up again right here. And now that we have this, what we can do is we can hit tab to go back into edit mode. We can hit control R and you can see this yellow ring pops up. Um, this is uh, called a loop cut. Um, so back in the old Blender days, it used to be in a tab called loop cut and slide um, because you could take these loop cuts and you could slide them. But that's not what we're going to do right now. Um, that was just a little fun fact. Um, I don't really see it in... 2.8 and above but what we're going to do is when we, when we have this yellow ring we're going to use our scroll wheel um, and we can just give an absurd number of cuts to this kind of just something like this um, and now what we can do is we can just go back into face select and then on uh, one of these borders of the faces we can just alt shift and click and it'll select a ring um, if it selects up and down you can just deselect it and then try to get it back on this edge but we're just going to do this every two um, rows I guess uh, and yeah um, just something like that um, and then we can hit E and then S and then just kind of bring these out and then we can hit G and then Z to kind of even these out like this and then we can scale these if we want maybe inset them a little bit more E S bring them out G Z bring them down scale them down maybe just have something like that um, so that way we just have kind of a lot of little stuff right here uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to hit shift A and we're going to add a plane uh, we can just hit S and then 20 on our keyboard to scale it up 20 times in size uh, we can go ahead and go to our rotate tool over here on the left um, and then we can just kind of rotate this to where it is touching the ground, but not completely. Um, and then what we can do is we can go ahead and delete this default point light that's in here. We can hit Shift A. Uh, we can add an area light. And then we can just point this directly at our object. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. I'm going to go to our light settings. I'm going to change the uh, power to something like 500. Uh, I'm going to change the size to 5 meters. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our render properties over at the uh, top right, uh, this little camera icon. We're going to change our render engine to Eve. Uh, we're going to change our render engine to Cycles. Sorry. Device, go ahead and set that on GPU Compute. If this is grayed out, go to the top left on Edit, go to Preferences, and then uh, under System, under CUDA, Optics, or HIP, your graphics card will be there. You can just select it. It should automatically save. If it doesn't for some reason, these little three bars down here, you can save Preferences. Anyway, um, set that to GPU compute and now we can go back to our light settings and we're going to go ahead and enable the shadow caustics. This isn't going to do anything right now because we have to enable it for all of our objects that are going to be involved in the shadow caustics uh, basically. But uh, we're just going to enable that for now um, just so it's easier to do later on. 
Um, but now, if we go into, um, actually what we need to do first is we need to go ahead and select our cylinder. We need to actually give it the material. Uh, we're going to select our cylinder, we're going to go down to materials, and you can either do this one of two ways. Either you can click new, um, and just use the default principle BSDF, and turn the transmission all the way to one, and then turn the roughness down. Or, you can change it to just a, um, you can change it to just a, uh, glass BSDF if you want to, and change the roughness down. I'm going to use the principle shader, just because it's there. Um, so I'm just going to change the transmission up to one, and the roughness down to zero. If you add a glass shader with the roughness down to zero, it's going to do the exact same thing. Um, we're also going to right click um, with our cylinder selected. We're going to click shade smooth. And then we're going to go to our modifiers tab, which is this little wrench. Add modifier and then edge split. That's just going to clean up those edges real quick. We can click this little drop down arrow and click apply modifier. And then we're done there. So now um, if we go to our world tab and set the color all the way to black. Um, the world tab is this uh, little globe and just set the color to black. We can hit Z on our keyboard and go into rendered view and we can see uh, what it's looking like so far. So you can see right now it's not really doing a whole lot. Um, it's it's just kind of there. Um, you, can, you can kind of see the faint outline of it. There's not really a lot going on here. Um, but what we can do um, is we can go to, uh, we can click on our plane, go to obje uh, object properties, which is this yellow orange square. We can go down to visibility um, or shading, shading, not visibility. We can go down to shading and then just select receive shadow caustics. So still nothing happens because we haven't um, selected this object to cast shadow uh, caustics. So um, in that shading tab in the object data tab uh, still selected, we can click cast shadow uh, caustics. And so now when we do this, we can see that something is starting to happen. Blender kind of starts chugging a little bit, but if we go ahead and size this up here, and position our light, whoops, position our light correctly. we should be able to see kind of um, this is very fuzzy but you can kind of see it right here um, that down here uh, the lighting is a little bit different uh, for each of these ridges so um, this can depend on your model the lighting whatever but with this enabled it just kind of makes it look a little bit more realistic yeah you can kind of see it a little bit better now how the shadow kind of fades out and you can see each of the ridges there um, but yeah, um, this is pretty handy for just some more uh, realistic caustics. It doesn't have reflective caustics still. Blender still has not gotten to that. It is just still refraction. Um, either that or it's the other way around. Um, but it's one of those. Uh, Blender still doesn't have a full kind of Lux Core quality caustics yet. But we are slowly getting there. This is a step in the right direction. Glass has always kind of been a hit or miss thing in Blender um, and especially in Cycles. But um, hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you guys learned what shadow caustics were and kind of what they do. Um, they just kind of take into account um, shadows in, in your caustics. Um, but yeah, um, you can play around with this. Um, that's how you enable it. Um, if you if you make anything cool, um, post it somewhere. Um, but yeah, uh, my name is Michael from Polygon Island. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. That really helps me out. I love you all. My name is Michael from Polygon Island, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.